Hey everyone, it's Julie and Mark here from RV Love and we are here to give you an update today on the repairs, mods and upgrades we've made to our motorhome CC since the renovation, so stay tuned. Welcome back to our channel everyone. If you are new here, we're Mark and Julie Bennett from RV Love. We've been full-time RVing now for over five years in our motorhome and we are the authors of the best-selling book, Living the RV Life, Your Ultimate Guide to Life on the Road. We've been sharing here on YouTube and at our website rvlove.com the entire time since we hit the road since 2014. Now, if you aren't aware, we bought an older coach, a 1999 country coach right behind us here and did a major renovation on it to make it our ultimate home and office glamping machine on wheels. And we've been making some changes to it we did a RV renovation series we'll put the link down below in case you haven't seen that so we're here to get you up to speed on the repairs that we've made to this and the mods so we just wrapped up a full month of staying at our friend's property where we did the renovation last summer and it was great to be able to settle in one location with our friends with a much less hectic pace this year. <laughs> we were definitely able that was to have, crazy. Able to have a lot more time having fun, kayaking, biking, hiking, and hanging out with friends. But we still did some projects and updates on the coach as well. So we've traveled over 13,000 miles and across probably 30 states, I think, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, since we did the renovation, I know a lot of people have been asking how it's still holding up. We're gonna take you inside the coach and show you through and you can see for yourself. But we're gonna start here on the outside and show you some of the exterior uh, work that has been done to the coach. So Mike's gonna take you through that and then I'm gonna take you through most of the inside. So let's go. Well, one of the first updates I had to do is I had to fix this front bumper because when we were doing our book tour last winter, we got caught by a surprise snowstorm and ended up putting the front of the coach into some ice. Did some pretty big damage to the front of the coach. Actually cracked this fiberglass really well, but I was able to just repair that myself with a little bit of fiberglass and some paint I found at the auto parts store. It's not a perfect match, but it's a whole lot better than it was. Another significant upgrade we did to the front of the coach is they're not on here right now but we have magna shades that we installed i used to have the snap-on type and i used to have to hang over the roof or get a ladder to be able to put those on but now with the magna shade i'm able to put them on much more safely faster and they're actually much better view outside of the coach because it's a better quality fabric the magna shades do an amazing job of keeping down the heat on when the sun is hitting the windshield and on the side window and it actually allows us to be able to keep the privacy during the day. I can see out really well without anyone being able to see in. Of course, at nighttime, that's a different story. Have to use the curtains and the evenings. We also got new tire covers. We used to have the old bag type tire covers that you put over them, but I didn't like how they keep collecting bugs and insects and pine needles and all that. The new ones that we got from MagnaShade show the wheel, so they actually look much nicer. They're more compact, easier to store, easier to put on, and they stay on really well and they don't attract those bugs and needles like the old ones did. So another repair we had to do on the outside of the coach is underneath this generator. So when we bought the coach, there was some surface rust on the chassis parts underneath this generator. But when we went down to Florida and we're in that humid and salty environment, we were actually surprised at how much that accelerated the rust on these chassis parts. So we actually had to cut out sections of this chassis and replace it with all new tubing. It was just a few hundred dollars to have all this welding done and including all the metal for the chassis elements. So the welder we hired for the job cut out the old pieces of chassis, replaced it with brand new metal, welded it all into place and painted it with rust preventative paint. So it's in great shape now. After a not so fun start this morning, uh, well, or a non-start, CC won't start. So Mark's just trying to troubleshoot right now. So another repair I needed to do was replacing the starter on the coach. I knew I needed to replace the starter because there were a couple times that the coach did not start and I had bad signal. I had to actually use a rubber mallet to get the starter to work on our road trip from Maine over to Oregon. And once I got there, it failed to start one last time. But it was luckily I was in a great location that I could stay put, order the part in and get the repair done. You have to crawl underneath here 
which you want to make sure you're very safe in that practice. Put it up on jacks, put blocks, put anything to be able to make sure that the coach doesn't lose air while you're underneath the coach. But I was actually really proud of myself that I was able to make that repair myself, replacing the starter, and it only took about three hours. All right, moment of truth, I just installed my new starter. New starter installed! That's the first time I've ever done that, car or RV. That feels good. Good job, hon. The starter itself was about $450. Had I gone to a shop, I probably would have paid more than that just in labor. Doing it myself saved me a ton of money. Let's head inside so I can show you what we did on the inside. So ironically, the last thing we did to upgrade the interior of our motorhome is the first thing you see when you walk in, and that is the stairwell. This used to have disgusting grey stained carpet, especially after I dropped my cup of tea on it. It looked awful. Most of the time you couldn't see it because the stairwell cover is tucked away except on travel days, but I really hated seeing how disgusting that looked when the rest of the coach looked so nice. So come and take a look. Mark has used the same luxury vinyl plank flooring here to uh, cover what was previously carpet. We kept the black rubber steps here, works just fine, added in some extra trim and voila beautiful new stairwell entryway into the RV. See how nice this looks now? Beautiful. So the next mod I wanted Mark to make for me was here in the passenger cockpit area. On drive days, I'm sitting here often working on my laptop, I'll have water, I might have a tea or a coffee, and really nowhere to put it. So you can see that Mark has made me a little shelf here to maximize this gap, this wasted space here between my seat and the wall where I can keep tea or coffee, I can keep my water. I've got a third one back here that's just like a little cup where I keep a, you know, small objects, nail file, pen, etc. And there's actually a shelf down here where I can slide a laptop in and hide it out of the way when I'm done working. Voila! And the great thing about this is even with that little cabinet in place, I can still move the chair around to be part of the living area. So it's made really great use of this little deck corner here in the front and given me a place to put my laptop and my drinks and miscellaneous things on travel day and keeping it out of the way. And just as an expansion of the desk area here in the main living area, added a little cabinet. This is actually just a little bathroom cabinet I found at Target. And we've actually mounted this to the wall, but this is a bit messy right now, but this is where I can keep hard drives and uh, there's a power strip under here. So I can keep all of my cords in here together, reducing the look of all of the cords out here in the main uh, office area, keeping it all much tidier. You may notice and be wondering what are these two white appliances behind me. This is uh, an air purifier which we got last year when we were in an area that had a lot of pollen and was really bothering Mark's allergies. That helps keep the air nice and clean. And over here is a really great compact and very powerful little dehumidifier which we love. Bought that when we were in uh, Florida over Christmas and this has been fantastic for getting all the excess moisture out of the air and keeping the coach nice and dry. So. Okay, so now let's move on to the kitchen. So you may remember from a previous video that one of the last things that we hadn't been able to get done on the coach was reupholstering these seat cushions in the dinette and they were just covered with a duvet cover and it didn't look that good. Honestly, that was one of the hardest things to try and find. It seems to be a dying art, but fortunately, one of our amazing followers out there, Susie Henriksen from Lake Country Upholstery, reached out after that video and offered to make these for us. I was able to send her the dimensions, a diagram, I picked a fabric sample. These look fantastic. They are super comfortable, and I'm so excited that we now have nice upholstered cushions here in the dining area. So you can see here, they've got a beautiful piping around the edge, really good quality, proper upholstery fabric for dining seats. Again, more Velcro, and loads of storage underneath some. Very happy, I can't believe that took almost a year to get sorted. So do you want to give a big shout out here to Susie Henriksen of Lake Country Upholstery. She did an incredible job, she was amazing to work with, and it was so easy just being able to ship them to us at our campground. And we love them. I'm going to put Susie's contact details down in the description below. 
another upgrade we made here in the kitchen was mounting magnetic wine glasses to underneath our cabinet here. Sounds crazy, but these are actually Bavarian crystal wine glasses that have a magnet embedded in the base there. I hope you can see it. So these are really nice to drink out of and I love how we can just mount them vertically on this really, really strong magnet strip while we're driving. We've been over some bumpy roads and these do not go anywhere. They're great for storage, they look good, and we love being able to easily access a wine glass when we need them. We did actually do a separate review of these Silwe wine glasses. They're from Germany uh, on our Road Gear Reviews channel. I'm gonna put a link to that down below as well. Oh, and we also have a coupon code to get you a discount. So that's pretty much all we've done here in the front area of the coach. We'll go back, I don't think we've done anything else in the bathroom, in the bedroom, the toilet. Everything's held up really well. We love all the design, love all the quality, and everything looks pretty much the same. Is that right, Mark? Has anything else changed? Well, there's a change to the electrical system in the back. Oh yeah, that's a repair. Let's go check it out. So back here in the bedroom, there were no design updates. We still love this sanctuary of a bedroom we have. What we did is actually repair to the electrical system. There's a component called a transfer switch. And in our coach, it's mounted back here behind the breaker panel. And for those of you who don't know what a transfer switch does, it's an electrical panel that decides which source of power you're gonna be using for the motorhome, whether it's coming from a power pedestal or from your generator. Well, unfortunately, the transfer switch was damaged and so we could no longer get power from our generator. If we're in a campground plugged in, that's totally fine. When we were boondocking, we were usually okay with our large Battleborn battery bank and our solar power, but if we had a multiple days of rain or cloudy conditions, it really would have been nice to be able to have the generator to top up our batteries. But fortunately, once we got to Oregon, we could have the helpful hands of our good friend, Brett Hayes. You probably remember him as the funny guy from our Ultimate RV Makeover series. He's far more confident and comfortable working with electrical components. And so he volunteered to be the guy who climbs up in the cupboard and we open up the panel on this side and you can replace the transfer switch back behind here by accessing it from there. I, I took that lid off and I was like, oh wow, there's a lot more inside here than I expected. And uh, Brett looks at it like, oh, all right, great. That makes sense. It's a piece of... <laughs> <laughs> manufacturer gave us schematics but it was on the inside of the lid so we didn't even know we had it but now that we got it this is cake it's like that diet sugar-free cake with no gluten that no one likes but it's cake uh, really glad that brat helping so it's really awesome to finally have that working again so now I can use the generator anytime I need to power those batteries back up. The replacement of the transfer switch was about $200. Took some research to be able to find the right kind of transfer switch to be able to swap it out with. But once I did, we were able to just order that online. And Brett, who's a retired flight engineer for the Air Force, was able to help replace that in probably about three hours. So it was a relatively simple job as far as hours. But had we taken that into a shop, that expense would have been substantially more. So another major upgrade we did on the outside of the coach is we updated all of the patio awnings, the slide covers, and the window covers with brand new fabric from Tough Top Awnings. Yeah, they all, the previous fabric did not match at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it was old, it was literally falling apart, the stitching and the fabric, mm -hmm. and it had mildew. So it was getting pretty gross. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually didn't even like to put the awning out very often. And that one was only about two years old. So we kept the original awning uh, arms in the window topper hardware. So we've replaced the fabric with all of the same gray, high quality, durable vinyl fabric. Uh, thanks again to Tough Top Awnings for that. We absolutely love them. That was for Such an exciting upgrade. We had a huge awning, one slide topper and two window awnings. And of course, you know, the cost is going to depend on what you have and the sizes. But what we're going to do is put a link to that down below. And if you decide you want to upgrade the fabric on your awnings and slide toppers, then you can use the code RVLOVE to save 5%. We're going to put a link down below. But we'll be doing another video on that coming up. So I just yeah. wanted to give you guys a sneak preview. It's looking great and really 
really is just that paint job that needs some love now. Well, that's it. That is the repairs, mods, and upgrades that we've made to our motorhome. So I'm really happy with how it's going. And you know, it's just fun actually just being able to have free reign to make the changes that you want to make to your own RV without being worried about what you're going to be doing to it or worrying about depreciating it even further because we've actually done the opposite I think. Yeah I think we've definitely done the opposite. I, it's We hit bought it at the bottom of the depreciation curve, done a lot of really great mods and upgrades mm. to it, increasing its value. And it's also been a really good confidence booster for me to be able to do a lot of these projects myself. Always, as RVs, there's always little improvements and repairs and updates you're going to want to make to your home on wheels. But so far, we're really happy with what we've done. Absolutely. I hope you guys have enjoyed following along our journey with this. And until next time, we'll see, see you on the road. road. Julie? Yes? This is what every lady wants in their cupboard above their bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big step. Here's the old transfer switch. We've got it pulled out and a lot of loose wires in there. So now... But, but I'm permanently mounted <laughs> in here. <laughs> you are if you until, you're, until you get that thing put back together. <laughs> so this model, the old one that's in there, it's a discontinued model. You can't, you can't buy them anymore. You might be able to get one in a junkyard. You might have caught that video. Maybe leave a link. <laughs> I don't know how you guys are YouTubers. That's all you're... It won't let me out until it's fixed. Oh, we, we gave you a fan. We did give you... What are you complaining about? Look, how many times have I been on your YouTube channel? I got my first fan. <laughs> <laughs>